Is it getting hot in here or is it just more random shaped builds? Greetings friends, Chaos here. What's this? The continuation of random shape challenges? Yep. I still have three more random shape submissions to go through after I complete today's. If you all are enjoying these wacky builds and you'd like to see more after the last one is complete, let me know by leaving a comment and liking this video, then I'll kick off asking for some more viewer submitted random shapes. Today's random shapes comes from Ragon. I'm excited to see what's in store for us this time, so let's dive right in. Whoa. Um, when I asked my patrons to send me random shapes to build inside of, I did not ask for them to be set in different biomes, so it's completely coincidental that all three of these have been in different biomes. First the ocean, then the forest, now the underworld. I love it. It keeps me on my toes, as does this shape. Unlike the last two submissions, this one isn't a series of multiple random shapes, it is a singular one. And look what we have here. I love when my viewers know me so well and just know what to give me. Ah, perfect. I'm gonna give this random shape some thought, then start the time lapse. Goodbye for now. Right off the bat, the first thing that stands out to me is that the left half of the shape is rigid and boxy, while the right half is almost organic. The challenge is for me to build within random shapes, not on top of them however, so I'm hollowing out the rectangular shapes on the left, because these could easily become rooms of a structure. I'm going to leave the right side as is for now. I also want to make sure what I'm building fits the theme of the biome, so this chaotic mess is going to be a demonic prison. While I do that, unfortunately I have to announce that our plushie campaign did not meet its funding goal. If you were one of the amazing people who pre-ordered a plushie, you should expect to receive a full refund from Makeshift soon, if you haven't already. Sorry we couldn't get them out to you all this time, but if you'd still like to help support the channel with the money that was going towards the plushies, I would recommend dropping your support over on Patreon. There are various tiers of reward, depending on how much you'd like to pledge, ranging from access to the patron-only Discord server, to all of my world downloads, and even me thanking you personally at the end of every video. And to all of the amazing folks who already support the channel on Patreon and YouTube members, thank you very much. I couldn't do this without you all. Now, back to the build. I could make all of these boxy shapes one large, oddly shaped building, but then I had the idea of making them a bunch of smaller buildings all clumped together. Some of the areas won't even be indoors at all, but rather just connection points. I'll get to that more later. For now, I want to focus on giving the initial buildings their outer layers. Since this is going to be a hellish prison and the underworld is hot, I imagine the best way that these demonic overseers might make their prisoners suffer a little bit more is by building their housing entirely out of metal. I'm using copper and tin plating for the rooftops, with iron brick for the floors, and lead brick for the side walls. All of these blocks are painted gray to bring them to a uniform color. In the instances where I'm building cages, I also use spike blocks. So far, I'm pretty happy with what we've got going on here. We've got these broken up into clear, individual, identifiable rooms. I made some of them not necessarily rooms. I think I'm going to put some stuff in here. I could just leave these as chains here. I think I have some other ideas. I might put another cage in here, and I've got another idea I want to play around with. Up next, I want to start clearing out a bunch of this over here because I'd like to build a cavern around this build and not just have a big dark square border. And I would like to work on the walls for the rooms. I'm still not decided exactly what I want to do with the more 
chaotic. Well, I guess everything's chaotic. The more um, rounded <laughs> shapes over here. I'm still debating between a couple options in my mind. So we're going to save that for a little bit later and continue work on the build over here. To push back the black border, my go-to item is the drill containment unit. This thing is not only fast, but it's great for landscaping because it automatically slopes blocks as it shapes the terrain. While that's not necessarily helpful in this particular instance, it is so often useful when building because it can really speed up the process of landscaping. Unfortunately for me, I love this mount a little too much and I got pretty overzealous with it, removing far more blocks than I needed to. Light in Terraria typically only penetrates about seven or so blocks before it becomes all black shadows. So I really only needed to remove around that much around the edges. But with the black smooth sandstone out of the way, I can start placing my gray painted standard sandstone, which is what will make up the entirety of this cave. I don't need to worry about making this place a desert biome because, well, the underworld already has heat waves and the hell biome background overrides any other biome that may be present. Once the outline of the cave is done, I just need to fill in the gaps. What can be seen is filled in with more gray painted sandstone, and then the rest I can quickly fill in by using a bunch of sticky dirt bombs. I highly recommend using sticky dirt bombs if you're needing to fill in a big area that will be covered in complete darkness and not seen. It makes things much, much faster. Then all that's needed is to bust out the old hammer and start shaping the cave to make it look more natural. With the cave walls out of the way, I can now get to showing how this structure is being held in place. As you can see, I decided not to give a ground layer connected to the bottom side of the buildings. I was worried that it would detract too much from the random shape that Ragon gave me, and I wanted to fill that area in with lava later anyway. So I tried to think of another way to have this building sitting inside of the cave. I kind of alluded to this earlier, but it will be hanging from the ceiling by chains. The smaller unattached houses will also be connected to the larger ones with chains. While the standard chain item in Terraria looks fantastic, it does appear to be a bit small to hold up something as large and heavy as a metallic prison all on its own. So I'm going to be building massive chain links to connect this prison with the cavern around it. The chain links are made using Silly Green Balloon and Frozen Slime Block, both of which are painted gray. The Silly Green Balloon is rounded on both the top and the bottom, which makes it perfect for the thinner portions of the links because it gives us that illusion that the link is wrapping down on itself away or towards the camera. The frozen slime block looks great when it's painted gray, and it's a fantastic metal block, and it doesn't blend with Silly Balloon, which is a necessity to make this illusion work that you can tell the difference between each individual link in the chain. If they all blended together, you wouldn't be able to tell. I use these large chains in various locations connecting not only the buildings to the ceiling, but to one another, and I place these standard small chains throughout the area to complement them, in a kind of random pattern to match the randomness of the rectangles. Once that's done, I got the idea of trying to play around with more materials to try and bring more personality to these structures. I tested out lava moss brick, but I was never quite happy with it, so I settled on crimtain brick along the ceilings of the builds. I wanted to use some of the blocks that we can actually find within the underworld as well, so I blended gray painted hellstone brick and obsidian brick into the lead brick walls. The hellstone brick adds an additional flair to the overall build with the sparks that it occasionally shoots out. I also used some ancient hellstone bricks on the underside of the walkways because it's a bit more rigid and flat looking than the hellstone bricks that we get nowadays. I'm still on the fence with some of the materials we have going here. I really like having the ancient hellstone brick underneath the walkways. It adds the sparks coming out as well as the more modern hellstone bricks blended in with the sidewalls. 
the modern obsidian brick it looks like areas that have been charred and even more worn but they kind of pop out a lot so i'm debating just painting them white and having them blend in a little bit more but also provide more texture to the wall i'm on the fence about that we'll see which i decide on in the end and i still want to get the lava moss to work in some way the only problem is is that it blends in really well with that giant lava pool in the background and that lava pool obviously looks amazing we don't want to get a world globe going and change that out but it kind of makes this hard to see so i think i need to move on to the walls for now and then maybe once the walls are done inside of the rooms i could find some places to use this lava moss brick the bottom layer of the background walls is a line of gray painted ancient brick wall with a line of gray painted iron brick wall on top of it then a strip of gray painted copper plating lines the ceiling while the majority of the interior walls in these buildings will be gray painted lead brick that will match the side walls in doorways i use a line of tin plating next to a line of rich mahogany fence wrought iron fence makes up the windows which are then lined with tin and copper plating frames Copper plating also runs behind the bottom of each house, which peeks out beneath the block a little bit to give it a little bit more detail. Gray painted ashwood fence makes for the thorny looking handrail on the walkway to the left, and a little more wrought iron fence behind some of the blocks on the bottom walkway give it the appearance of rivets popping out. So far so good with this hellish prison scape. I love the chains coming off of it, the sparks flying out everywhere. It looks painful, it looks demonic, it looks torturous, and it's fantastic for what we've got going here. It's chaotic in nature, the random squares in all these different positions. It definitely looks to me like a hellish prison and not one that you'd want to live the rest of your eternity in. So that leads us to the monstrosity this massive thing over here i've been giving this quite a lot of thought while building the prison area and i think i know what i want to do uh, if we look in here i have some sections of the walls where these two uh shapes meet and i made the walls look like they are crumbling with some gray painted hellstone brick and the reason for that is we're gonna have this creature bursting through the walls of the prison and I say creature because this shape made me think of a giant open mouth and this kind of looked like maybe there's an eyeball and a mouth down here or something like that and i got to thinking of the wall of flesh and maybe how it can be created maybe it starts as a smaller larva like this and it bursts through a prison wall and it devours everything inside adding that flesh to its own mass getting larger and larger until it becomes some monstrosity creature such as the wall of flesh I kind of want to do something like that. I don't know how it's going to come out, but we'll find out. The majority of this monstrosity is going to be made out of red painted flesh block. I typically prefer painting flesh block red to make the colors a bit more uniform without making them feel totally washed in red like you'd get with the deep red paint. Once all of the flesh blocks had been replaced with sandstone, I grabbed my trusty pone hammer and began smoothing everything out. Now to make this thing a bit more creepy. Bone blocks make up the teeth, which show up in quite a few locations around the creature. For eyes, I started off with frozen slime block painted white, but eventually moved on to silly green balloon with the same coloration. The large eyes have a deep red painted silly green balloon wall behind the white painted balloon to give them more shape and the red colored iris. I tried making the eyes glow with illuminate coating, which I did like, but they felt far too bright against the flesh, so I attempted to illuminate coat the entire thing. 
That was a big mistake. It made it harder to see against the background, and in my opinion, it looked much worse that way. So I scraped off all of the coating, which also scraped off all of the paint, had to repaint the flesh, and then in the end, I decided not to illuminate coat the eyes or anything else on the creature other than the flesh walls behind the eyes to help them blend into the blocks around them a little bit more naturally. After adding a few more lines of teeth, mouth, and eyes in various locations, I was about to wrap up the time lapse when I had an idea that would take this creature's creepy factor up another notch. I grabbed some pink ice block and red paint, and I began replacing segments of the flesh with a sort of webbing with this block. The idea here is to kind of make it look like there are tendons stretching out or something of that sort, which I think gives this creature a lot more interest without taking away from the shape that I had to work with. And here we are with one creepy monstrosity that I'm quite pleased with how it came out. I think it was a good idea that I had on that whim to switch to some pink ice with red paint for tendons that are just barely holding this thing together while keeping to the shape and yeah it's <laughs> kind of creepy but i like it i'm very happy with it especially the ones that are poking into the buildings i think they are my favorites although it looks like i'm missing a little bit of paint right there <laughs> So up next, I just need to decorate this place. We need furniture. We need piles of bones, dripping lava, dripping blood. The next time you guys see this build, it will be complete. And here we are with the final version of the random shape hellish prison and fleshy monstrosity build. <laughs> I am very, very pleased with how this has come out. It's adequately creepy. I feel like I hit all of the vibes that I was wanting to. The Blood Moon enemies are perfect for this. And yeah, just all in all, very happy with everything we've got going on here. Lots of bones, lots of skeleton, lava, blood. What's not to love in this build? Let me know in the comments what you all think. So here is the before and the after of today's Random Shapes builds. And remember, if you want to try this challenge for yourself, you will find the link to the original unaltered version of the build in the description below. And if you want access to this version of the build, be sure to help support me by signing up to Patreon. And this build will be included in next month's folder. And I wanted to give a huge thank you to my biggest supporters for the month. I pick three, Sarcasm Not Intended and Vault Tech Rep 77. And be sure to check out my channel artist Mythical Water linked in the description below. Thank you all very much for watching. Be back soon with a new video.